my next presenter is an amazing, an amazing woman, is what I'm going to say. She climbs mountains and hangs off of uh, rock faces and does all kinds of adventure sport photography. It's my great pleasure at this point to introduce Irene Yi. My name is Irene Yi, my pronouns are she, her, and online I'm known as Lady Lockoff. I am a Nat Geo adventurer, and I've worked with most major brands that kind of touch the outdoor space. If you haven't heard of me before, just to prepare you, I'm a little unconventional in this space. I picked up a camera cold six years ago, and I read the manual, and that is how I started my photography journey. Now, most people think that you need some sort of elite athleticism to be a rock climbing photographer. And I am here to tell you that is 100% untrue. This is the technique we call the beach whale. And really, most of the time, this is how rock climbing feels. And since, uh, since we're here, we're just gonna, we're gonna close up so you can really get the sense of how rock climbing feels. Now, if you think that rock climbing photography is long days with heavy packs, I will also tell you. And here we have at Lady Hawk Lockoff, hard at work. Yeah, Tyler, come on. <laughs> Got it. That is untrue as well. Most of the time, right, what it really takes is motivation and creativity. And what you might lack in athleticism, you can make up for in enthusiasm and a good eye. This photo was taken from the ground, as well as this one, right? 10 minute approaches. And guess what? When you do this, you don't have to lug a bunch of stuff around with you. You just walk from the car and you take your photo and then you walk back. For me, photographs from the ground are actually a little bit more compelling in this space than photographs from a fixed line. So when you're on a fixed line, right, you have that perspective of being above the rock climber. And for me, right, you're stuck in one spot. You can maneuver around a little bit, but you really can't maneuver around like you can on the ground. And so photos from the ground, for me, will always look different and always be more creative in that space because you have to still convey this sense of awe and when you can get it right, it really does look incredible. So for me, rock climbing came first. In 2013, I, I was living in Boston and I had this kind of realization that I was working three jobs just to pay my rent and that's what my life was. And so I decided to move to Las Vegas to figure out what else life could be. And so there I went, I went online and I just found a meetup group and I went to a local rock climbing gym and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna shelve my ego for a little bit. I think as adults, a lot of the times, we're so afraid to be bad at something and we don't try new and different things. And so for that one night, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna shelve my ego, and I am going to be bad at rock climbing. But the folks there could not have been nicer. They were so encouraging. And the second time that I went to that meetup group, they invited me outdoors. And my first Las Vegas rock climb, I was like, oh yeah, check, cool. I'm gonna do this for the rest of my life. And so photography for me in the beginning was all about memory, right? I wanted to freeze moments in time so I could remember them and um, also put them on Facebook to freak my dad out a little bit. And so photography was about memory and I really wanted to remember what I was doing. Now I'm going to take a hard left turn here away from the slideshow, mainly because the next photos are really cool and with live people, they kind of scare, scare them a little bit, and so it's always fun. So I'm gonna talk about my favorite form of rock climbing, which is called off with climbing. And that is categorized as any crack in the rock that is bigger than your fist. So it can be from fist 
to body size like it is here. And I'm just gonna have you take note of this piece of rock climbing gear. It's called a cam, and for this style of rock climbing, you absolutely need bigger gear. And this will be important later on in the slideshow for another photo, so just take a look at that thing right there. Now for off with climbing, right, you're using your whole body to be able to get into the rock and then ascend up the rock. So you do all sorts of crazy things by using your knees and your elbows and your back and your butt. And as you can see, sometimes you fully have to get inside that crack to be able to ascend it. And then also, oftentimes you have to invert. And this is where you put your feet above your head to be able to ascend or climb the crack. And this can happen at three feet off the ground or 300 feet off the ground. Now with great off with comes great sacrifice, usually in the form of your skin, uh, bruises and things like that, but that is what makes it kind of photographically interesting because it is very challenging and hard to shove yourself into a rock face. Everybody scared enough? Yeah, good, okay, we're ready to move on. All right, back to the slideshow. This was my first camera pomegranate for scale. It is a lens that attached to your cell phone before cell phone cameras got good. Um, I won it at a corporate holiday party, and so I decided mostly to take it out. And I took time-lapse photos of myself, I took photos of my friends, and right, photography went from being memory to now I'm a climber who takes photos. Now you may not think this tiny little thing does very much, pomegranate for scale, right? But I took this photo with it, and I learned some very important things on that day. Number one, that you didn't need the best gear to be able to be creative with photography, right? It is all about using the gear that you have now to the max ability that you can get out of it. I also learned that when you don't have anybody really telling you how things should be done, you're like, yeah, I'll just tape my camera to my rope and that'll be fine, right? Right, but it teaches you about getting different perspectives, trying different things and just seeing if they work and sometimes they do and you get amazing things like this. Now this was also a pivotal photo for me because it taught me a lot about what I wanted to do with my photography. I watched Kathy climb out of this roof crack, sometimes on one hand, and in that moment, I felt such the emotions of a strong, powerful, confident woman in a way that I had never done before. And when I got home and I saw this photo, I knew that I could also convey that with imagery. And so this really taught me about what I wanted to put out in the world, which is things that I needed to see, to know that I could also perhaps have this sense and be able to do these things. Now, I also learned that I didn't need to know or understand the elite world of rock climbing, right? As I began my journey, I went from that climber who takes photos to a photographer who featured rock climbing. And I could just photograph my friends. And for me, I got to be there in those moments and also feel their sense of accomplishment. And that is kind of what drew me in. Now there's an old school mentality that you have to climb a climb to be able to photograph that. But I found that that's not really true. If you deeply understand a person, you will understand how to photograph that person. And that is something that was pivotal for me because I got to feature those folks who have constantly been left out of the outdoor narrative. Women, BIPOC, queer, adaptive, those are all people that I get to feature in my work. I learned also to never put down my camera. Climbing happens when we wake up in the morning with our cup of coffee to when we toast marshmallows at night. There are so many important in-between moments. And for me, what fascinated me is not what was being rock climbed, but who was doing the rock climbing. 
Now, in 2015, I decided to join Instagram. <laughs> And that was also a catalyst in my own journey because I found and connected with a bunch of people who also really needed to see what I needed to see to get out of my own boxes that I was put in to be able to try and be inspired by something new and different. Now, I've made a career off social media, but I wanna emphasize something. I recently had a photographer come up to me and said that he figures out whether his work is good or not based upon the amount of likes he gets on social media. And so I was like, okay, that's one way to think about it. But I take amazing photos like this one. And my most liked photos are of people I've photoshopped onto bread. So you know, don't put all your worth into social media. What is more important is creating work that is meaningful to you despite what other people think. Now for me, I often think of rock climbing not as an end product, but more like paint, right? Something that I can manipulate and move around to be able to tell a deeper story. And so I had this thought process in my head that I wanted to create an image about how connected people are to adventure and rock climbing, because I don't know if you've ever talked to a climber, but like, it is part of their life. And so I created this photo called Climbing is My Air, right, to try to mix that thought process of vitalness of adventure and rock climbing to somebody's life. Now remember that cam that I remembered you to remember, that I asked you to remember? This is that cam, and when you put the lobes of the cam down, I thought it beautifully looked like lungs. And so this is an in-camera double exposure. So first I took a picture of the cam, then I took a picture portrait of the person, and in the camera in real time it mixed it together. And so I thought this was like the first time that I could actually use that thought process of paint to be able to tell a deeper story with it. So when Fujifilm approached me about, you know, coming up with a project, I was like, okay, how can I apply it in this way? So I started here with this woman, Diane. In climbing, you meet a lot of folks, and nobody stood out to me like Diane did. Um, she's gone through three hip replacements, and even after, oh, like, heart surgery, we were going out climbing, and she's like, oh, Irene, can I come? I just had heart surgery, but my doctor told me that I couldn't be outdoors for 16 days, and it's day 15, and so that's close enough. She is 73, and she taught me that adventure never had to end. So when faced with, this, uh, when faced with projects like this, where you have to come up, from, uh, come up with ideas, right? I go back to my core thought process. What do I need to see in the world that other people need to see as well? And being immersed in the climbing business, when women are even featured in this space, right, they're usually really young. But for me, I knew that that wasn't really what appealed to me personally. It didn't parallel my own experience in my life where I knew so many women over the age of 40 who continued to put adventure somewhere in their lives through families and careers. This is Nikki, she's 43. And so for me, right, the young push the boundaries of what is possible, but, but I don't really resonate with that because I'm, you know, I'm never gonna be a teenager again and my fingers will never be steel, right? What I wanna see are people who can show me all that the world can be for me as I age. And so Fujifilm helped me create this uh, project with the goal being to feature three women who are over 40 adventuring in their own way. And I encourage people, it's in that gallery behind you, to, to go and look at it. It's meant to be viewed in person and large. 
Now the problem, oh, oh, okay, well, here we go. So <laughs> this is where I started with these three amazing women. If you know rock climbing photography, this is kind of a riff on a very old school Yosemite climbing photo. Um, and so I gathered the three most awesome women that I knew. And so we have Marty, who is 43, Tracy in the middle there, 57, and on the end, Selena, 53. And in a week, we went climbing, we went on a river trip, and we went sand dune boarding. Now the problem with adventure photography is that it's often about a big world with tiny little human beings, right? But I knew that that is no way to feature people, it is a way to feature the world. And so for this project, I knew that I would have to really think about how vital portraitry was to this particular project because I did not, I wanted you to see these women up close because that is so Im important to who they are. And so in 2018 I took this photograph and I realized that you could actually see the reflection of the rock in the eyes here and I was like, well that's cool. But that, that was not something that really interested me at the time because right, I often work in a phone size space and you're never gonna pick up details like that when you're on a phone and the screen is really small. And so this was an exciting project for me to actually get something printed and enlarged because there are some photographs where you need to be able to view all of that detail that is put into an image. So if you look at these portraits, this is how I wanted to feature these women, right, with the thought process of using paint, uh, as of using adventure as paint. Because I needed you to be able to see their faces up close and know who they were, but also be able to see life and future reflected in their eyes. And so if you look closely at these photographs, this is Tracy, I reflected hiking in her eyes. Selena, I reflected an incredible morning sunrise right before our river trip. And Marty's, I reflected rock climbing. Now, none of this um, was done in Photoshop or in, uh, in camera double exposure. This was all done in real time. So what you see reflected in these women's eyes is actually what they're looking at. And for me, I'm a doer, you know, you can read so much, you can watch so many videos, but I really need to be able to go out and figure out how things are done. And so I will tell you the things that I have learned from this project. Number one, keeping yourself out of the eye reflection is really hard. And so if you looked in that video, right, I kept waving. And that's me trying to see where I am in that person's eye reflection, right? Not to mention you are like deeply staring into these women's eyes for prolonged periods of time, but you're not looking at them, right? You're looking, looking at your reflection and what they're seeing. Next, right, it's all about that pinpoint precision focus. I, pretty much never manually focus. I always use autofocus, you know, where we're photographing adventure sports and things are going by really quickly. That is one of the things that you usually don't have time for. And so this is kind of like the first time that I manually focused. Also autofocus, right, often wants to go on the most contrasted part of somebody's face, which is the lash line. And I am trying to, you know, get that pinpoint precision focus on something smooth and glassy. And so for me, it was about manually focusing and not about using the focus ring, right? But pushing and pulling back that camera millimeters to be able to get that pinpoint focus, which can be very challenging, right? Because you have three moving parts to this. You have the subject of the portrait who's moving, you have the person that's reflected in their eye moving, and then you have me hand holding the camera. I did try to use a tripod once, but it didn't really work out, right? Because it's important for people to have expression on their faces, and what does that mean? They're gonna move. So you have to move with them, and so this is what the X-H2 did really well, right? Handhold camera, moving subject, moving second subject, and that is what that camera does really, really well. Um, and so, right, you had to feature the right focus, the right lighting, and then you had to contend with, right, you're asking a human being to stare at something really bright, 
for a long period of time, and so you kind of have to like figure that in as well. But if you learned anything right about the off with climbing that I do, if it's tricky and hard and overly complicated, I'm like, yeah, that's great, I'm in. But that is really what adventure has taught me, right? It's taught me to really plan ahead, but that when you're on the adventure, you just throw that plan right out the window and you just kind of have to go with whatever's happening. And that's probably the biggest lesson that it's taught me. Uh, mainly because sometimes you sit on a fire ant right before your river trip. Oh, it stings. And it's not very pleasant right before you know that you kind of have to make these portraits. And so lastly, very quickly, I'm just going to talk about the bottom photos here. What I love about adventure photography is that you actually right, get to be out on the adventure with these people. Now, a lot of people take this style in a very kind of documentary sense, and that is just not what I do. I would never call myself a documentarian because I really love the fact that you get to connect and converse with people to create art that comes out of it. This is Marty. Um, I tried to get each woman on like kind of the thing that she loved to do best. And so Marty was in water. She's a huge advocate for getting black people feeling comfortable and safe in water. This is Selena. She's a huge yogi and I just knew that sand dunes at sunrise would be her thing. And the number one thing that I learned from being out with these women, the number one piece of advice they gave me Everybody should start stretching today. Um, but really, right, I got to know these women, and I really got to learn that you have to follow your own path, but you can absolutely weave adventure into it at any point in your life. And lastly is Tracy. She's been rock climbing for probably the majority of her life, and she is the first woman or really the first climber that I saw that showed me that climbing didn't have to be about brute strength and a huge ego, but that it could be really technical and really thoughtful. And she taught me that success in rock climbing is not only getting to the top, but also knowing when you've hit your own limit and it's time to come down. That is also success. Now you may not have noticed the shape of these as you were viewing this, but this was very intentional because for me, this is not just a bunch of photos that were printed, this was an art piece. And I wanted to make sure that everybody knew that these were not a, you know, these women were not a dot to be passed over, but each an exclamation point of life. And so I hope through this work, you know that there are so many boxes that yourself or the world will put you into, but that life has so much to offer and you never have to stop exploring it. But if you keep an open mind and an open perspective, perhaps you too will be wise. Thank you, everybody.